These are the 2013 AP Chemistry free response questions and then my solutions worked after each one. I'm going to record each free response separately to give you the opportunity to listen to just the ones you'd like to. Free response question one always deals with an equilibrium question. Let's take a peek. Question one. We're being asked to answer the following questions related to the solubility of fluoride salts of alkaline earth metals, group 2A, alkaline earth. Student prepares 100 mils of a saturated solution of magnesium fluoride by adding 0.5 grams of the solid to 100 mils of distilled water, stirring until no more solid dissolves. Assuming that the volume of the undissolved MGF2 is negligibly small, telling us it's a saturated solution is all that is. And we determine that the fluoride ion is 2.4 times 10 to the negative third molar units. Let's take a peek through all questions and we'll go to the work page. Write the chemical equation for the dissolving of the solid. Calculate the number of moles of the solid that dissolved and then determine the value for the KSP, the solubility product constant of the magnesium fluoride at 25 Celsius. All right, so let's kind of write down some of the things we know. Let me pull up my work page. Free response question one. We know that the salt is magnesium fluoride, MGF2, and it is going to dissolve, creating aqueous ions of magnesium and two aqueous ions of fluoride. So the very first letter I, write the chemical equation for its dissolving, there it is, taking a solid, putting it into water, and showing the dissociation of the ions. I would imagine just guessing that that would be worth one point. Calculate the number of moles of magnesium fluoride that dissolved. Well, if I write down some of the things that they told us, we realize that um, the concentration that fluoride was given to us was 2.4 times 10 to the negative third molar units, big M. I can easily convert that into the number of moles by recognizing that there was a volume, and the volume that was provided for us was 0.1 liter, 100 mils. So if I just think that through 0.1 liters, we get 2.4 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of the fluoride. So carrying that down here to the letter I, we would recognize 2.4 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of fluoride. We have a want over given ratio. For every one mole of magnesium fluoride, we see two stoichiometric moles of fluoride ions, a one to two ratio. So the number of moles of magnesium fluoride would come out to be exactly one half of 2.4 times 10 to the negative fourth, which indeed is 1.2 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of MGF2. And there's your letter II. Number, or letter III. <laughs> Determine the value of the solubility product constant, KSP. Well, again, its expression would be the magnesium ion concentration times the fluoride ion concentration squared due to that coefficient in our dissociation equation. The molarity units must be used, which was a little trap here is that they had you calculate moles in the second question, but down here those brackets indeed stand for molarity. So we have to use the molarity, which we know to be 2.4 times 10 to the negative third molar units for the fluoride, and again that would need to be squared. The magnesium concentration, again, one half of 2.4 times 10 to the negative third would be 1.2. One half of that is 1.2 times 10 to the negative third molar units. So a little ratio. And when we hit for the KSP, we would hit on our calculator 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3 times 2.4 times 10 to the negative 3 squared. And you would find 6.91 times 10 to the negative ninth. No units on that equilibrium expression. 
Let's go back and read a little further the Part B. A beaker contains 500 mL of a solution in which both calcium ion and barium ion are present. Again, these are more alkali metals. And the concentration is a 0.1 molar at 25 Celsius. We have 500 mL of a 0.1 molar. We separate the ions by selective precipitation. We're going to add 0.2 molar sodium fluoride. Sodium, of course, is an alkali metal and will always be a spectator. So we can see the competing precipitation, calcium fluoride versus barium fluoride. We're going to add that sodium fluoride one drop at a time. And I want to know what will precipitate first. Justify my answer. In other words, they won't give credit just for a guess. They do give us the KSPs for both. Alrighty. Now I'm going to keep reading because I notice that we're going to have to calculate the minimum concentration of the fluoride to initiate that precipitation. And then we'll need to calculate the volume of the sodium fluoride that we have to add in order to get that precipitate to form. So it looks like a MV equal MV there. So first, which salt will precipitate first? Let's continue back on the work page. And again, this would go back to letter B. The calcium ion plus 2 was given to us as 0.1 molar, and the barium ion, which is a plus 2, was given to us also as a 0.1 molar. KSP, I'm just kind of jotting down so I have this uh, handy. For calcium fluoride, 3.5 times 10 to the negative 11th. And the KSP for barium fluoride, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 6th. Which one will precipitate first is what this first little I is asking us to do. Alrighty. Well, we understand that the fluoride is the precipitate. So we have calcium fluoride versus barium fluoride. And those what those KSP values are for. And when this dissociates, we get a calcium ion and two fluoride ions. Here we get a barium ion and two fluoride ions. Alrighty, so this looks to be like our expressions. We understand that the KSP, 3.5 times 10 to the negative 11th, is equal to 0.1 molar, there's the calcium concentration, and whatever that fluoride is would need to be squared. Here's the barium fluoride, the KSP is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 6. We understand here that 0.1 times whatever the concentration is for fluoride also needs to be squared. And those would be exactly equal to 3.5 times 10 to the negative 11th for calcium and 1.8 times 10 to the negative 6th. Now I believe to earn credit for this particular problem, all you would need to do is make a comment which would precipitate first. And that's got to be the one with the smaller KSP because the math is exactly the same. We're going to divide out by 0.1, and we're going to end up taking a square root for the value of x. To verify that, we could show the math, but we already know that calcium fluoride will indeed precipitate first simply because its KSP is the smaller of the two values. Now to hit this out, 3.5 times 10 to the negative 11th divided by 0.1 square root, and that will give us the value of x. Over here, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 6 over 0.1 square root, and that will give us the value of x. Now hit with me and see what we find for x. For this first value, 1.87 times 10 to the negative fifth molar units. And over here, 0 0.004 molar units. And this molarity is standing for um, the fluoride ion concentration, F negative. All right, that's what we let X represent. So what we've just done is actually verified mathematically that calcium fluoride would indeed precipitate first. But again, I'm kind of answering the next question just to verify this question. Um, KSP is smaller for the calcium fluoride, therefore will precipitate first. PPT, precipitate first. And then, kind of looking ahead, and we had done some reading, 
little further down underneath that next caption, it asks us to actually calculate the minimum concentration of F negative. So this little II was done right here. To get the minimum amount to get the calcium fluoride to precipitate, we calculated 1.87 times 10 to the negative fifth molar units. And their math was verified up above. So we actually tackled both questions at the same time. It also asks us to calculate the minimum volume of 0.2 molar. So we know the following. Calculate the minimum volume of 0.2 molar sodium fluoride. Well, its concentration of 0.2, we'd like to know how much we have to add. That must be added to the beaker to initiate precipitation. Do you remember at the, how much was in the beaker to begin with? That was 500 mLs. Alrighty, so that 500 is the new volume that we're adding this to. And the minimum molarity here, we just calculated above, 1.87 times 10 to the negative fifth molar units. So MV equal MV, a dilution problem. Hit this with me, 500 times 1.87 E negative 5, divide by 0.2 and the volume comes out to be 0.047 mLs. And there's one last part, kind of a non-mathematical question. It asks us, there are several ways to dissolve salts that do have limited solubility. What's one procedure to dissolve the precipitate that formed in part B? What might be a way to get a stubborn salt to dissolve? So lots of thoughts come through my mind here. We have um, an opportunity to think about raising temperature, perhaps, um, stirring it, grinding it, uh, adding an acid. All of those things would be um, acceptable answers. Add more water. So I'm going to just list possible answers, and I'm sure that they would take one of a multiple of correct answers. If you add more water, stir it up you're going to create a more dilute solution. And what would happen? Well, more of it, of course, would dissolve if I increase the volume. That's one possible answer. Just add more water to dissolve the precipitate and stir. Solubility is directly related to the temperature, so you could heat the solution, another possible correct answer. You could add acid, increasing um, the solubility by lowering the pH adding acid would increase solubility. So those are just some things that pop to mind, and, and uh, there's probably more, but those are the three that uh, I know for sure would earn you that last point on problem one.